super quick market update today. Are we breaking down? Is the bull run over or what is going on? I actually sat and studied one of my previous videos this morning. This video on March 19, approximately one month ago. March 19 was here. At that time, no one was particularly interested. What is this guy talking about? We're obviously going higher. We have halving coming up and all kinds of things. Now with the halving being one day away, I think that a lot of people will feel that what I talked about then will seem more relevant today. And my plan, my course of action is exactly the same as it was then. Let's listen to one section from the video. As you can see that the corrections here in the 2017 bull market was generally bigger and wilder than during the 2019 and 2020 into early 2021 bull market, where the corrections were typically in the 20% range with occasionally going up to 26-31%. But then I'm not counting these structural shifts like the Covid dip of minus 63% or this ranging price action of minus 55% where this parabola had sort of already ended. And the reason I'm doing that is that I want to work with the assumption that this parabola over here is still very much intact. If it remains intact, how deep correction can we realistically get for new juicy entries? Well, armed with learnings from history, it seems plausible that we could at least get 20% corrections. Maybe if we're lucky, 30%. So where does that take us? Let's zoom in. If you're new to crypto and you feel that your portfolio has been absolutely smashed and slaughtered today, you will be shocked to realize that this correction so far from the top, from 73,700 to today is only 14%, so not 40. So at that time, at March 19, I thought that the dip might reach around 20% which was 59,000 something. And I thought perhaps it will extend to this diagonal line, which is this diagonal channel that goes back over a year ago. And as you know, a straight line on the log chart is a parabola on the linear chart. Let's switch back to log, always chart on log charts. So I thought that that channel boundary might provide some support, but then the dip didn't extend to that level. And I actually felt a little disappointed there. I wanted to add some more positions from some new fresh money. And I couldn't catch it because instead of 20%, the dip became little short of 18%. So while I was right in thinking all the way back here that we probably will get dips and based on historical figures, they will probably be something like 20%. I couldn't catch this dip. But now look here guys, from the top, to yesterday's dip, we more or less hit 20%, 19.21, and we more or less hit this diagonal resistance. Always have to expect a little bit of front running. So turns out it wasn't so dumb after all. The support level to watch now, like I said day before yesterday, is this level, 61,800. We did briefly dip below, but once again, we got this strong buying reaction back up and right now we're above support again. The resistance level is 70,800. That hasn't changed. But what about the trend? It looks blue here, right? No, that's because I'm showing a lower time frame to better illustrate the prices. Large line remains gold on the correct daily time frame. And while we are holding these support levels, there is nothing wrong with the chart construction either. Should we break these supports? I'm going to move my buying objectives lower. Like I said a month ago, like I said on Tuesday, 52k is the next natural support. And it is absolutely possible that Larsen line is still up if we get there. But depending on how we get there, could also turn down, then I will be more defensive. So why is this happening? Is it some whale manipulation? Is it the halving? No, guys, it's not. It's the yields that have pumped and they haven't come back down. This looks still bullish here. 
So that's what's putting pressure on Bitcoin. That's putting exactly the same pressure on stocks. Here you see the stocks. Here you see Bitcoin the past couple of days. And here you see the yields. So that's what's been driving the price action past couple of days. It is clear as day in my opinion. The only thing that's holding up is the physical gold. At times like this when fiat's crumble. The dollar strength index has also pumped up at the range high. Because among the fiat currencies dollar seems the safer bet and now it's a flight to quality situation. Stronger dollar, stronger yields typically means pressure on speculative assets like Bitcoin and thereby of course the whole crypto market. I will add one more comment because so many of you are asking about Solana. If you follow the Friday TA reports you knew the situation. We had this flag back in November broke on the upside reconfirmation. Then we had this flag or pennant which also broke on the upside. Then we got the third pennant, but this time it didn't confirm, it didn't break on the upside, instead it broke on the downside around the 9th of April. And if we look at 9th of April, we also had some sinister things happening on the USD chart. This isn't a strict head and shoulders. It is not, but as I said in the previous video, sometimes the crypto charts are not textbook. Still, this looks pretty bad and sure enough we got a breakdown on April 12. From April 9, it's about 22% down on the USD chart, clearly driven by the technical issues. But I don't think the situation is hopeless for Solana. Because if we're zooming out and looking at the bigger picture, those flags, pennants and wedges have played out their role. Now we're in a much simpler situation. We have a clear support which is exactly at 0.002 Solana to BTC. That's the situation. This level has been very important in the past. Support, resistance, resistance, resistance. Support, 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 support. And now support again. So this level hasn't broken down. This is the level to watch. 0.002 and price is pretty close to that right now. As mentioned these technical issues in Solana has been reflected in the price. That means that the resolution of those technical issues could also be reflected in the price in the other direction. So I really try to understand what is going on here. Clearly the version 1.17 patch didn't completely solve the issues. And I think the full resolution might only come in the version 1.18, which currently is a testnet release, not recommended for mainnet. If anyone knows for sure when this will be rolled out, I am very interested in knowing that, please write in the comments. This document, the release schedule, is now moved to the Agave repo. This is updated four days ago, so I'm not sure that this is correct. So Agave is one validated client. That's Yito and that's Firedancer. If this document is correct, it says here April 30, tag mainnet beta upgrade. May 13, mainnet beta ask for volunteers to take 10% of stake to version 1.18. 20th of May, 25% to version 1.18. And first end of May, recommend all nodes upgrade to version 1.18. That's a little bit later than I thought, so if anyone has more info, I'm very interested in knowing. I've been posting a little less because I've been working hard on bringing you guys new stuff. And next week, the CTO launch on Q2 launch schedule will start. So if you haven't taken the course, go to ctolarson.com, make sure you have pro set up, and try not to lose all your money in the markets before that. Thank you, Dyke. CTO Larson out.